Knobs. You're uh, live, man. You're live. Up on chilly yeah. side. Yeah. Your chili. flag's crooked. Back behind you. Turn those headphones up. Look like I'm in the Ripley's house or something. Hold on. That's that. not the one. That's not the one. That's not the one. That's it. Turn it back down a little bit. Bro. Nope. Other way. Other way. All right. Up a little bit. Up, up, up. All right. Right there. Stop. All right. <sighs> Everyone, uh, welcome back to the 307 podcast. Um, this is going to be the first ever disciplinary review board that's been conducted on the podcast live on air. Uh, me and Cornbread will be sitting board members. Cornbread, will you please introduce uh, Judge Chili? For the listening audience and the YouTube audience, we have the Honorable Judge Chilius entering the courtroom now. Thank you for being here, Judge. Thank you. For you guys don't know, this is a disciplinary review board, other words, otherwise known as a DRB. Um, our president, Blake Wright, is being uh, going to need to be held oh, accountable. The, Court is in session. On. The the thing just went black. What did? All the video. <laughs> did it really? I guess I got disciplined too quick. <laughs> I'm out, guys. Bye bye. I'll just carry on with audio. What the heck, man? Oh, I'm just kidding. Damn, look, boy. look. <laughs> you don't look. You don't want to start that crap. Got him. You do not want to start that crap. <laughs> order, judge. order, order. Oh, sorry. Thank you, judge. Um, objection. All right. <clears throat> so, objection granted. <sighs> As the on the term speaking out of turn, hey, wasn't his turn judge, to be talking. Get him under control. Who's judge. the you gonna let him tell you what to do? I'll kick you out of this courtroom so fast you're gonna miss <laughs> another turkey. <laughs> this is not the way a DRB is conducted. All right, Blake. Who's you don't the judge? Who. <laughs> you don't talk unless you're talked to, Blake. You're the one that's on the daggone. Who's the judge? Chopping block right here. Order. Do we have security? Take that Zen out of this courtroom. <laughs> Judge, may Spit I put it out? May I present the charges against uh not right now. <laughs> President Blake. Cornbread. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, you will you you from here on out, you both will refer to me as Your Honor. Prosecution may present the filing. Well, Judge, I, I'd just like to be clear right off the bat. There is two people that need to be prosecuted this morning, not just one. Understood. So first, first prosecution is going to start on the morning of March the 30th. We're dealing with the case file BRW. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Blake Wright. On March 30th, Blake Wright supposedly wounded but definitely missed a turkey and then turned to March 31st, the morning of mm. definitely missed a turkey, two turkeys being missed opening day. Then the second day of turkey season, Objection. that's, that's unacceptable objection denied. That's unacceptable behavior within the three or seven team. And that's way below standard of our procedures. I have something to say about all that, Your Honor. He, I present witness one to March the 30th. Yeah. I'm also a board member here, so I'm bringing these allegations against BRW, President Blake. Uh, yes, I was with Blake on March the 30th opening morning when he did irresponsibly shoot at a turkey and wound the turkey. And after the turkey was wounded, the turkey was laying on the ground and he failed to recover the turkey uh, by just lackadaisically approaching the, the wounded bird, uh, not approaching the bird in a manner of urgency. And um, the bird could have been recovered if he would have used some urgency and actually approached the bird and, and took a secondary shot. Uh, so now we have a, a very rare animal that is hunted after by all of us, that is now ultimately 
probably going to die in the woods and uh but but no one's going to enjoy the fruits of the of that uh of that animal so it's to me the charges being brought against him are not on March the 30th anyways are not so much about him missing the bird but about being wasteful, having no sense of urgency, not being able to recover the the game, and ultimately uh, killing a live animal that will later on die, you know, from infection you can't or prove whatever. That it's going to die. That's um, hey speculation. So speculation, objection. That is the objection granted. Uh, you got to hush now. That's your the honor. I, may I may I sh- add to the well. The, the prosecution team, I saw all this happen. You gonna let him interrupt you like that, Your Honor? <laughs> You're trying to my, talk. my apologies, Your Honor. Yeah. The prosecution team seems to be confused about what the actual charge is. And and there's nothing I hate more as a judge than a prosecution team that doesn't know what the crap they're talking about or doing. Now, are you guys a team? What is this? Yeah, we're board members. Well, why don't you get your case straight and understand what you're even bringing? <laughs> They're kind of in cahoots. Ma- mainly, your honor, the the situation is is that Blake missed two turkeys, and that is unacceptable unacceptable under the three or seven projects team standards and procedures. But your honor, one board member is is talking about me missing. The other said he didn't care that I missed. He but just look, cares that the there was no fruits of the. I would like to give the prosecution another chance to revise and clarify what their position is, what the charge is that is being brought. Okay. If not, I'm going to throw out the whole case. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me give a shot at this corner, right? Oh, you man. screwed it up by, in the beginning. By, you just screwed it up. Charge number one. <laughs> charge number one. Got to be thrown out. <laughs> being brought against President Blake. Charge number one is the wounding of a rare animal charge number two is objection com- they're not rare they're, com- they're on the hunted species you can't hunt rare animals charge number two is missing completely one of these rare animals that is known as the eastern wild turkey the charge we're bringing against him for wounding the animal is a much more serious charge than the charge of simply missing an animal on the very next day, okay? Because the fact that he has wounded this animal is affecting us all because it's one less rare turkey that we can all enjoy hunting after. Missing the animal actually affects us all in in a way because he's educating these animals that therefore makes it harder for all of us to hunt. So they're two separate charges. The most serious charge being wounding uh, one of these rare turkeys and then not being, and then a failure to recover recovery, <clears throat> failure to recover the animal. Understood. When, Time's when, up. As a witness, he could have recovered this defendant. animal. Order. Continue to talk. When I'm talking, case is thrown out. Does it mean nothing to you that I wore the proper vestige to court this morning? Judge. Now time will be given to the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. On the morning that Chad was with me and we were hunting, I shot that turkey and I wounded it. And he went down. He Guilty went down. Was charged. He went. He went down hard. Um, you, Your Honor, may I say something? Oh gosh, no, oh. no. Your Honor, this is very pertinent to the case. <laughs> well, hold it in, cornbread. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. It's ridiculous. You're going to get the case thrown out when you have a valid case just because you won't shut up. Now to the defendant. Chad shot a turkey that morning, and he wounded his turkey. He went down. And I told him, I said, I see my turkey up there still kind of moving. And he said, well, my turkey ain't dead either. And he said, I've got to go get him. So he commenced to stood up and ran in there without them. Yeah. And look, he didn't say, look, we're going to just try to get them both. He stood up and bolted 
before I could even get up, Your Honor, you know I've been having to go to the doctor, and I, I'm not able, you know. And so he ran out there and jumped my turkey before I even had a chance to get, it would have been unsafe for me to take a shot because he had gotten between me and the game, therefore resulting in me not recovering the injured turkey. Understood. Objection. We were online. We were online. He had clear safe shot on on the the bird that he had wounded. When you object, you object and then wait for permission to proceed. Objection denied. Now time for the cross ex- defendant. Are you done? On for this for the first charge, yes. Understood. Charge number 2. Thank you, your honor. You're welcome. You want me to go? What was what is the second charge even anyways? I don't even know. Do you under, Is it clear to you what they're charging me with? May I, may I approach the bench, Your Honor? Yes. The, the, I apologize first off this morning for the prosecution not having their senses about them <laughs> to yeah. being able to relay what the exact charges are. That's an understatement. <laughs> the, on the morning of March the 1st, there were two shots fired. March Excuse me, March Shut 31st. it down. Shut it down. This is it. March 31st, this there was it. two shots fired by Mr. Blake Wright, one of which completely missed the first wounding said animal. Were then, you there? This is out of the mission, the, own, the defendant's own words to me. And then on March 31st, he missed another turkey. As the prosecution stands right now, we will <laughs> teetotally negate March 31st if you will just decide on March 31st, Your Honor. So y'all saying I did something on March 1st? Is that because he said March 31st? 31st. Again just Thirty, now. 31st. That is a good Your point. Your Honor, you also know that I go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point. Thank you, board members, uh, Cornbread. Uh, that is a good point, bringing up the occurrence on March 31st. Your Honor, it seems like the— President Blake did seems fire— Seems like Chad's trying to run the courtroom here. Are you going to tolerate President this? President Blake did fire two rounds at this turkey, therefore <laughs> wounding one and missing the other. So really, he has That's, three charges, a wounding and two misses order, being brought against order. him. Order. Now time for the prosecution to ask questions to the defendant. Cross-examination. I'll start Prosecuting attorney. Me. I'm going to allow my assistant, Mr. Chad Wright, to cross-examine the defendant, Your Honor. I don't like him, <laughs> but understood. So, President Blake, can you please describe to us how to properly and accurately fire a shotgun? Step by step. No, sir. Well, therein lies the problem. Um, President Blake, can you please describe to the courtroom what happens when you shoot and miss at these rare wild turkeys and how it becomes harder for the rest of the group to then hunt them afterwards? I will explain what happens. When you miss one, oftentimes you can go back to the exact same spot the following morning and you can call him up the same bird the next morning and even shoot and miss him again. Well, that's not that. That's not that often happens. That is not. And in this case, I think it did. Did it not? No, it didn't happen. That's not in alignment with proper turkey hunting doctrine. So there we have an example. He does not know how to acu- he does not know how to describe the accurate procedures to shoot a shotgun, which is the firearm he was hunting with. Well, you he, asked, could I describe it? No, I can't. But that doesn't mean I can't do it. He, was the, was the bird called back to the same spot on the following day? Negative. Negative. So he also That's lied on the bench. That's a lie. <laughs> No, the, the second bird on the next day was over the ridge from, oh, you, wh- from where he wounded the first well, bird. Well, you didn't make it clear which charge you're talking about. Yeah, here. we're talking about the first charge. Mm. Um, well, can, can you describe how— Actually, you just asked what happens when you miss a turkey, and I said you can call him up the next morning to the same spot well, and miss him. And Chili, uh, Your Honor, 
judge asked, can't, did that happen? And it didn't happen because that is not a part of turkey hunting doctrine. That is not what happened. So he, he's, he does not. What happened? Does not conduct well, himself well, with sound doctrine. Regardless um, of doctrine, did I, it happen? No, it did not happen. I have one more question, and then I'm going to turn it over to my uh, my fellow board member, Cornbread. Uh, President Blake, can you describe how to accurately or how to properly um, recover a wounded turkey uh, so that you don't lose the bird? No, I cannot describe that. Okay, well, you obviously don't know that part of hunting either. So, board member Cornbread, feel free if Judge is cool with that. Cool. Your Honor, the uh, prosecu prosecution would request that you are very lenient on Mr. Blake Wright, and we are fully prepared to just accept against one charge. He's a fine, outstanding man. He's been helping me turkey hunt as well on a daily basis. That's our closing statement. Well, for charge one, that's our closing statement. We are prepared for only one charge, if that's no, what you I, would decide on, uh, Your Honor. I'm prepared to bring the second charge against him. Second charge, cross-examination, okay. and proceed. So after March 31st, the second day of the turkey season now, being April 1st, uh, President Blake goes back to the same yeah, the same location, uh, not the exact same, but the same area, calls in another turkey and misses this turkey completely. And so it shows gross lack of skill and negligence on his behalf that these two events occurred within a basic, well, yeah, within a 24-hour period. Three misses one wounded bird within a 24 hour period. And so th that's the second charge I want to bring against him. And he can tell us, he can defend himself if he wants to try to, or tell us what happened. I don't know. Would you like to retort? Well, no, that's, yeah, that's what happened. But I want, I would also like for everyone to consider, we have a liar in the seat here. Uh, he's proven liar previously many times. Uh, and his board member will also confirm that he said he had never missed a turkey ever in his life and he never would prior to this incident of him missing a turkey and the truth comes out that he had in fact missed turkeys in the past uh, and he also said that he did not call up the bird the next day and miss him in the same spot and his board member will also confirm that because he's an upstanding citizen very honest man wasn't the same spot. If the same spot that I missed the one was the same spot I injured the one, the same spot that you called him up. No, not the exact same spot. Did it I was the use, same area. Your Honor, did I use the word exact? Order in the court. <clears throat> I think I've heard enough. Me too. Well, we need to come up. I'll tell you what needs to happen. You're we going to tell me what, what's going to happen? No, you're not going to tell me what's going to happen. We will now assess the charges. Charge number one against Blake Randall Wright. He pleaded guilty, remember. Well, we, that, need to that, that, we need to That's what we're determining we need now. We determine his punishment. Your Honor, Speak he's one more time and the case is dismissed. That's it. One more time. But, Your Honor, your threats are empty because you've already said that and he's done it again. No, final time. Case is dismissed. On the order number... Case file 046153, BRW Blake Randall Wright. Charge number one, wounding a bird, gross negligence. How do you plead? I have to get with my lawyer. He already confessed. Case is dismissed. <laughs> That's it. All right. Thank you. Case is dismissed. How's the case dismissed? He already pleaded guilty. You spoke again. Okay, well, let's move on to charge number two, then. That one's not been dismissed. Um, the, It didn't say charge dismissed. It was case. <sighs> well, yeah, dismissed. case number two. And it's a whole separate so, day. 
look, it's not a matter of right and wrong. It's a matter of playing the game, Chad. And uh, Your Honor, thank you for your time today. If you would ever like to go hunting, I'm a fantastic caller uh, and tactician in the turkey woods. If you would like to go, you know, as long as you're shooting squared away, I'd love to take you. So he's not going to receive any punishment for what he did, Judge. Oh, the the slapstick retard prosecution presented no confirmatory evidence that a case should even be presented in the first place. No evidence was presented. Your facts were not straight. You, the prosecuting teams, the attorney team didn't agree. The dates range from March 1st <laughs> to April 2nd being the second day. No fact was straight. No fact was correct. This is the biggest slapstick, slack jawed, weak hand, idiot prosecution team I've ever dealt with guilty or not. You can't proceed a court like this. Blake Randall Wright. You're welcome, buddy. You had an idiot prosecuting you. I'm sorry that they took your time like this, Judge. <laughs> it's very disrespectful your, to your, you. Your Honor, we have another defendant <laughs> in the courtroom. And may I also allow you, ask you to allow Blake Randall Wright to join the prosecuting team now. Well, it's about time for my day to be over with, but this one will take, if you will allow me to speak <laughs> freely, your honor, we will move your time along very quickly. I will hear a third case on the day. Case number three against C.A.W. Mr. Chad Wright. On the morning of April the 2nd, Mr. Chad Wright by the prosecuting team is being found non-patient, non-present, and non-deliberate in the turkey woods, which is against the standard of the 317. And then also on April the 3rd this morning of being late to Team PT. Mr. Wright, would you like to talk to the Honorable Judge Chile about the morning of April the 2nd? Mr. Blake Wright, would you like to talk to the Honorable Judge Chile about the morning of April the 2nd? I would. Your Honor, on April the 2nd, Chad entered the turkey woods into my hole that I had showed him. That you missed all are. those birds at and wounded them. We got to have some order around here. About to get mad. <laughs> and not only... Did he miss a turkey? Therefore, educating it, if it wasn't already because of his poor calling, he got busted before shooting. Therefore, further educating the turkey. And you might as well just not even ever try to hunt over in there ever again because he called bad, the turkey seen him, and then he missed it. And it don't take much to know I'm not going back over there. Something was trying to get me. Your Honor, he was not patient in watching which way the turkeys was going. He was not deliberate with his movement. And he was not present because he was winning a turkey competition. In his words. In his words, he was going to win with that bird. He was not completing the hunt. The, the competition was over. He was not present, Your Honor. All three are infractions of the 317. Patience, present, and deliberate. Now on to April the 3rd, if you will allow me, Your Honor. Can I not defend myself? <clears throat> well, for not time right frame, the Honor said I could speak freely, sir. Case number two. April the 3rd. Charged. Team PT was scheduled for 8.30 a.m. Confirmed. We received a group text that I do believe you was a part of, Your Honor, <laughs> that stated by Mr. Chad Wright, I'm running 15 minutes late. My clothes didn't dry in the dryer. And not only did he send that text, but he was way later than 15 minutes. I will let Mr. Blake Wright give you the exact time frame, the approximate time frame of the lateness of chad your honor when i looked at my watch when he was finally ready to shoot 
we were had supposed to meet at eight thirty, and it was nine twenty four. So, extremely over the time that he was almost be late. an hour, Your Honor. <laughs> Unacceptable. Almost an hour, Your Honor. I had been there since 6.05 myself. <clears throat> Would the defendant like to speak? Yes. Yeah. To explain what happened on charge number one, I did enter the Turkey Woods <clears throat> on April the 2nd. And... um I picked me out a spot on a hill where some turkeys had moved through the day before. Um, as I'm sitting along this hill, there was a much absence of gobbling. And so me being the patient person that I am, I didn't get up and move. I just kept sitting where I was at. I didn't get impatient. I probably sat in this area till 8.30. Uh, no, probably 9 o'clock. I'm going to say about 9 o'clock. Haven't heard a single gobble. Now, by this time, these two here had done left out of the woods because they are in Objection. Irrelevant. Objection. Okay. Denied. So I, I'm still in the woods. And I'm sitting in the same spot where I started because I knew that them turkeys came through there and I'm deliberate about where I sit. I'm patient and I'm deliberate about where I sit. I was being very present because the day before a box turtle had come in on me. And this day, because the turkeys weren't gobbling, I was still waiting for that box turtle to come in. I have the box turtle on video. I actually shared it on Instagram. And as I'm sitting there, just over the rise, a turkey gobbles at about 9.05. Take into consideration, I've been sitting in this spot since 7. All right. The turkey gobbles. I stay calm. Give him a, one little call. Hear nothing. He gobbles two more times. And I'm sitting just back off the military crest of this ridge. Very deliberate place to sit. Okay. It's all strategic. <clears throat> I'm facing to my right. Two hen turkeys come in to my far left, almost behind me. And they cross over the road that I was sitting on. And as they're crossing, I can see the gobbler coming through some thick pines. And he is a strut, and then he's a walk. And then he's a strut, and then he's a walk. At this point, I knew I was focused so completely on just closing the deal. The hens feed down without seeing me, maybe 15 yards. When the hens feed down, I'm thinking that this gobbler is watching these hens, I know I have to move to get in position to even have a shot. So I strategically move like this. Look at how awkward this position is. I move like this, okay? No, like this. <clears throat> I have one little lane through a stand of thick pines when i moved the gobbler comes out of strut and he begins to putt he went putt, 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 putt. That first one kind of wasn't a putt it was just like <laughs> and and so i realized that was the alarm putt because i studied turkey doctrine the alarm putt means he is nervous. He saw that movement. I said, I have one chance in this little lane of opening lane of pines 
at about 50 yards. This opening's probably only six inches wide. <clears throat> I said, if he steps into that lane, I know I have to take the shot. He stepped into the lane. I took my shot. I was holding rock steady, even though I was in an awkward position. Immediately, the turkey disappeared. I don't know if he went through a portal. The you these sounds like an orbital. Yes, these guys that are bringing these charges against me knows about these portals. They've seen one turkey hunting. These orbicals or these portals tend to be open near turkeys. As soon as I shot, the turkey was gone, disappeared. Okay. That turkey did not run off or fly off after I shot. The turkey disappeared. And so what likely happened is right as I was pulling my shot off, that turkey moved through an orbital into uh, another part of the woods or another dimension. Turkey was gone. I jumped up. I ran over to the spot immediately because that's the proper recovery procedures when you shoot at a turkey. I ran straight there. I'm standing in the exact spot that the turkey was standing when I shot. I can literally see the pellets from my shotgun in the, the tree bark of the trees standing right there where he was standing at head height of the turkey. But the turkey was gone. And so I did not miss that turkey. That turkey passed through an orbital because he was already alarmed. He had a uh, he had a portal open. As soon as he objection, you're on. As soon objection as objection denied. As soon as he started putting, he went he he went through that orbital. My shot was accurate because I could see the evidence of the shot on the tree bark where the bird was standing. Understood. The shot the shot did not miss. It was an accurate shot. And so I deny these charges that are being brought against me of missing a turkey. Now, I don't deny the charge of getting seen by the turkey. I deny the charge of missing a turkey, and I deny the charge of bad calling of a turkey. Before the assessment of charge number one, <sighs> the prosecution will be given 30 seconds for a closing statement. Your Honor. He could not give you proper time frames. He swapped back and forth. Your Honor, he was shooting with his left and his right hand. How did he how did he possibly do that? He had a box turtle come in on him. A box turtle. The day before. What does the day before and a box turtle got to do it? He is fishing. He is fishing on your emotions, Your Honor. I have that turtle on video if you want to see it, Your Honor. The defendant may now have 30 seconds for a closing statement. Is he not going to say anything? No. The closing statement is, I am not guilty of missing a turkey. It's common knowledge that turkeys travel with orbicles and with orbicles ready, and the alarm put or opens the orbital. The turkey can disappear at a split second. I did not miss the turkey. Time for the final judgment. Case file 046514-CAW. I find Chad Allen Wright. <laughs> on charge number one. What is charge number one, Your Honor? Missing a turkey. Not guilty. Yes. Yes! Not guilty on account of an orbital in the woods. John, I find that to be absurd. What are you talking about? You've seen there an is, orbital. There is no scientific fact of turbo turkeys and orbicals traveling together. You've seen one. I find it to be absurd. I disagree. Now, case file 041. Five four C A W Chad Wright charge number two <laughs> uh, 
With the evidence presented by the prosecution team, I find Chad Wright, charge number two, to be guilty. What is charge number two? Late to PT. I didn't even get to answer for that. I didn't get to speak on that. I was there. Guilty. A one-week suspension will be implemented for charge number two. Suspension of what? You know. <laughs> what? How can... Look, how can I be convicted guilty of something and I didn't even get to defend myself on it? You did earlier. On charge number one? Both. No. Well, you can go ahead and say what you want, would like now, but you've been found guilty. I'm going to appeal that crap. Go ahead. We have an appeals process. Yeah. We'll do that on, on the next show. I'm appealing that. Well, your suspension will be suspended in the meantime. Until... You, you know, you know, what do you do when you when you put all the clothes that you own <laughs> in one washing load to get it all done? And then you, and then you start the dryer and some idiot has moved the dryer from permanent press to delicates and you start the dryer and let the dryer run all night thinking that your clothes are getting dry but then you wake up in the morning to go get the clothes that you need to wear out of the dryer and none of them are dry what, what do you do how can you leave the house but naked <laughs> what idiot did that i have no idea <laughs> how many idiots live with you well, Blake, you probably did it. Used the dryer. <laughs> you probably did it while you were over at my house last time on purpose. <laughs> well, this court proceeding Ooh. is over. Thank you all, classic, for your time. All right, YouTube, we're taking a, we're taking a, I'm taking a break. I got to go hit the head. What? <laughs> I got to go hit the head. Got to go blow off some steam. He got found Sick guilty. Of well, go I'll be back. Well, go ahead and go pee. I would like to talk with the rest of the team here about suspension. Well, the suspension, but also team PT late to team PT for an hour. Yeah. Almost an hour. <laughs> an hour, your honor. That's really, it. it's disrespectful. Well, yeah. the reason given was my clothes are wet. You can use fishing deep when you go to throwing that one. My clothes are wet. They're, I need them to dry. I'll be 15 minutes late. There ain't no way he had all of his clothes in the dryer. Air will know. Thank you. And if you did. Put them on wet. Or you could pull everything out and put three articles of clothing in there. And it would dry in about two minutes. That's right. True that. It don't take 15 to dry a pair of pants and a shirt. He woke up like I can test the reasoning for being late was not given. Mm. Mm. And the dryer was used as an excuse. Yeah. Maybe he heard a turkey gobble <laughs> and he tried to go get on him. Or or maybe he seen a nice box turtle yesterday <laughs> evening and he wanted to try to call that jewel up this morning <laughs> and make him another Instagram video. Of a box turtle. <laughs> well, I will say, box <laughs> turtles and orbicles have a strong correlation. Yeah, bo box turtles majestic. It's majestic. It's really not a turtle, but it is a turtle. Box turtles and quail. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm back on. I'm back on. I don't know what y'all talked about while I was gone, but. Um, all that being said, before we transition, uh, from that disciplinary review board, which I still don't know exactly what my one week restriction is going to be, uh, well, it's on suspension until you plead your case the next time. Appeals oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I appealed it with all that being said, let us please acknowledge the fact that Chad, that is me is the only one this season who has killed a turkey 
And so I am on the board. I am in, I'm greatly ahead in this competition that Cornbread retired me to, or freaking called me out to, called me out of retirement. Let's acknowledge that you should have never called me out of retirement, Cornbread. You know, I live at home. Look, I, I've lived a, a crazy life my whole life, man. I'm trying to be at home. I'm trying to live in peace, not kill things. I'm just trying to, to be at peace. And you call me out of retirement. And what happens on day one, morning one, I go out and I kill a monster Tom. Don't, so, don't blow you wad all at once, Bubba. It's going all the way to May 15th. That's an embellishment, too. <laughs> monster I, Tom? Um, yeah, Monster Tom. That thing still had yolk dripping off its onion, son. Whatever. Average. We got the measure. We got the, the measurements. None Have the you scored that Look, bird yet? No, I have, I can right now. No, don't Why worry about talking? it. Don't worry about it. Right. Just just chill out. So let's There's acknowledge. There's plenty of more box turtles you're going to see all the way <laughs> to May 15th. Y'all jokers, call me out of retirement, and what do I do on the first dang morning? Go out and kill, kill a darn rare well, turkey. Well, 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 I, look, I am glad that me and Blake, let's add the whole story up, could help you get your first turkey. Because while you were sitting in there, making you toast or whatever you was doing. I seen you in there at the kitchen counter with some type of thing and something in your hand, just lathering something up. Me and Cooney was out there with birds just gobbling to our back. And Cooney said, you going to go tell them? And I said, yeah, I'll go tell them that they gobbling. And I went in there and I said, hey, your turkeys is gobbling over there. So then you decide you're going to go hunting. And, and I'm grateful that Blake went with you so you could hear the turkeys, because had you come out the door without Blake, you probably would have been like, I don't hear them turkeys. Blake went with you, led you to them, and probably called him in. No, he didn't call him in. It was my idea. I told Blake. On, Thank you, Blake, for helping me I, help Chad. I told him during that hunt when I killed that turkey, I said, these turkeys, is, they're in there. They're moving up the draw. We need to wrap around and set up on them. We ambushed them. You did not so say that, you liar. And we got to the draw. He said, no, we need to set up right here. We was 100 yards from the holler. I said, no, man, we got to go down a little bit further. And well, we need to get down to the creek because if they come up here, they, they're they not going to want to mess around, you know, crossing that creek. Well, he killed it right on the other side of the creek, just like I told him. Who are you going to believe, YouTube? <laughs> the liar or the <laughs> who, truth who, who are you going to believe, me or Blake? I mean, come on. Who killed the turkey? Who killed the turkey and who shot and wounded a turkey and missed a turkey and didn't recover it all at one time? The polls are coming in. We've got one for Blake already. Yeah. Who are uh, you going to believe, guys? Uh, Y'all know who the daggone hunter is. Y'all know who the killer is. Little Virgil said gobble, gobble. I, uh, <laughs> I see, Blake. I started all this. I started all this Blake. years ago when I killed the There's first three, turkey. Four Blake, two Chad. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, four to two. That's about like Joe Biden Trump election. Thank you guys. Half. Half. All right. Well, I'm glad we got through those proceedings. That's been a long time coming. We've been waiting all week to come through on those proceedings. And um, it's good to get them over with so that we can move forward with the rest of our season. Chad was so tore up about that. I don't want to drag this on, but he called me later at Cornet and tell you. He said, "Hey, man, uh, really, I'm I'm thinking about going back in there and just looking and just I just maybe I just walked right over that turk because I know maybe I was just so excited that I just walked over him and he's really just laying there." I said, "No, man, <laughs> the one he missed, yeah, well, uh, the one that passed through an orbital, yeah, <laughs> that's the one uh, we're talking about." <laughs> <laughs> yeah Man, obviously i i was i was not guilty of missing the turkey so don't bring that against me no it has been found in a court of law that you were not guilty yeah so you mean the turkey that passed through an orbital right as i pulled and he wanted off. to go back and look for it thinking he hit it well yeah because that that is that's because only this morning 
Did Cookies I recall can come back through the orbital? Yeah, but in this morning, I I recalled the time that you and Cornbread actually witnessed the orbital moving through the woods while turkey hunting. You didn't recall that. We told you about that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why I recalled it because you told me about it. <laughs> that don't make no sense. Yeah. Then that's that's when I realized that what what had actually happened. Once you told me that story, then I recalled it. Yeah, it's exactly right. So it's been a heck of a week. Um, all right. Well, what do I want to talk about today? What'd you end up titling this, Blake? When life when life sucks. Oh, all right. Well, that's probably what people are on here. Well, that's, that's what you told me to title it. <clears throat> that's probably why people are on here. They're wondering, what should we do when life just gets to sucking, man? Have any of y'all been there before? Any of y'all been there? Chili, you been there? You just say, man, whatever's going on, you're just stuck in this situation where you're like, man, this freaking sucks. Nah. Oh, I know you have, Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have. Don't fib to me. I know everything about your personal life. <laughs> life don't suck. Well, you get in these spots sometimes where it does. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Y'all ever been in one of them spots where you're just like, man, what's going on right now? It's, it, it really sucks. And my my prayers just don't seem to be working. Y'all ever been in one of them spots? It's like, what the world? Why? I'm, I'm praying to the Lord to 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 change to change this situation or help me out of this or help somebody else out of this thing and they just don't seem to be working man you ever been in a spot like that i yeah. have i have i don't know how about y'all youtube yeah lots of them saying they're there now yeah man yeah i mean in, in a way i'm there now too you know there's there's some stuff going on in my personal life where I'm like, man, this is rough, you know? You worried, you know, you just like, dang, man, when's this going to be over? You know, you're, 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 you're praying and you're, you're asking the Lord to, you know, change the situation and, you know, make things better. And, and you're just like, well, ain't nothing changing. And as a matter of fact, it just seems to be keep getting a little bit worse and worse. What the crap are you supposed to do with that, man? What are you supposed to do when you get in one of them situations? I was going to ask y'all. I was going to get some advice you gotta, on You got to keep on rolling, man. <clears throat> you got to put some action with that prayer. What do you think, Blake? Well, I mean, yeah, you don't... I think one thing is you can't uh, you can't just wallow in it, right? I mean, when life sucks, it just sucks, but you get on with it. Like there's still people depending on you. Whether you know, maybe one of those people are the one of the ones causing it to suck, but they're still there depending on you, and you got to show up for them. And I mean, it, I guess reminding yourself that it's not going to be that way forever. Like your life now is not your life forever, and reminding yourselves of truths that are true and not um, believing the lies that, well, this is just going to be like this always, or, um, you know, there's no hope for, for me or for this situation. And so, I mean, that's what's helped me in the past is clinging to the things that are true, which are things that are in the Bible. And also that time is always changing, changing things. And, I mean, I'm only 32, so there's been a lot more people through harder times than me, but the times I've been through is just taking it one step at a time and not looking for the spot that you're trying to get to. And we talked about that on, on Resurrected, that um, even the, the things that you're in that suck, whatever it is you're going through, you can want to hurry up and say, oh, man, I'm just ready to get through this. I want to get past it. I want to get over it and, and for life to be good again. But there's a reason, I mean, maybe there's not, or maybe there is a reason that you're there, but regardless, there's something you can learn from it and something you can take from it. So actually just slowing down, experiencing life as it's happening 
and learning from it. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be comfortable, but you'll come out better on the other end. And so we talk all the time about training physically and, you know, everybody thinks that's real hard, but that's not that hard. The hard thing is, is when life hits you with these things out of nowhere and you, you don't have any control over it. If you have control over the situation, a physical challenge, you always know that you could stop it anytime you want to. Yeah. But with a life, with there was something in life that hits you, you don't, it don't matter if you want it to stop or not. It It's going to stop when it wants to stop. And so just carrying on, learning from it what you can. Yeah, I've really been reflecting on this and just assessing myself here lately, you know, and I thought too, <clears throat> Blake, you brought up, and I don't know if you did cornbread, but um, cornbread, I guess to sum up your answer is just like, you just got to keep, you just got to keep going, right? Yeah. That's, and that's the way my mm-hmm. mind thinks too. Uh, there's a lot of simplicity in that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's the way my mind thinks too. But I think it was Blake that brought up, well, <clears throat> no, remembering that it's not going to be like this forever or for the rest of your life. Well, what about all the people that are out there who, who, it is going to be like that the rest of their life. Whether they have had some, I watched a video the other day of this cat that um, had some, I think he, he was paralyzed. He broke his spine or something. And this joker was having these nerve pains in his body. And dude, it looked brutal, son. Have y'all seen that on yeah, Instagram? Yeah, I've seen the same video. Yeah. yeah, man. Dang, it looks freaking brutal. He, he would do something. He would like with a hammer or something, and then all of a sudden he'd have that nerve pain. And yeah, it might last twenty or thirty seconds. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, and then, uh, or like for instance, what about somebody that's terminally ill? That's like, yeah, man, I'm eat up with this cancer or this disease or whatever it may be, and and it it ain't gonna it ain't gonna change. This is gonna be. This is going to suck for the rest of my life, you know? Like, I don't know, man. I've just been thinking a lot about it. And, you know, the situation that I'm in <clears throat> right now, you know, you can't I, – I, I'm in a place where the things that I'm dealing with in my personal life, I can still hope and say, well, yeah, it's probably not going to be like this forever. Like, it is going to get better and – yeah, that does provide some hope, but for some people, they don't, they don't even have that option. You know, it's just, it is, it's going to freaking suck, man. And, um, I've been thinking about this a lot, like in context of, of, especially in context of, of prayer of like, because I, I start feeling that sometimes chili. I'm like, man, like why doesn't the Lord deliver us from this like why didn't the lord you're saying you feel that way yeah yeah like daggone man i mean it's almost like how many of you how many of you guys watching have ever got to a point where it sucks and you're just tired you're just tired of praying about it you know what i mean well what i've been thinking i feel like blake touched on it 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 seems to be the difference in two things (laughs) one is i'm dwelling on how bad this sucks and i just want it i just want to fix it instead of looking at it like i guess it's fine to say yeah this sucks but how can i handle it better i don't necessarily want it to be over Hmm. i just want to look i just want to be able to handle it better and 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 not lay down and give up and let it get worse that way yeah you just you you can't give up yeah, obviously, but I mean, like the people that that basically they know it'll suck forever. I guess you don't know that it will, but yeah, if you're terminally ill, you're pretty pretty certain that that's just going to be the way it is till you die. Man, yeah. But um honestly, even especially in those cases, why not look at it like how can I make this better in any way? What are ways that I can that I could do or that I could try to do or that I could think about that, that would make my situation suck (laughs) less instead of just trying to make it be over with, because you're not going to just make something like that. Just end. There's no, I mean, you can't do it. You can't look for some, I mean, you can, right? Like maybe there's some cure to whatever. And like, you could, that, that could just be the switch to turn it off. But 
I just think that's just a small tweak and looking at it like, okay, this sucks. I do want it to be over, but let me figure out how to handle this better and how to go about this better. And I don't know. I think, I think you would, you would look at the whole thing differently if we could do that because it would kind of take your mind off of this sucks. Yeah. But give you an actual goal to achieve, which you need to not just dwell on this sucks. And the goal doesn't necessarily have to be to fix whatever it is, but to make it better however you can. Make something, turn it into something meaningful, I think. Because when you're saying that, Chili, it makes me think of something that we talk to people about all the time out on the rite of passage or whatever, when it's like they, it really sucks for them and there's no end in sight. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's like, we, we talk to them about turning and like focusing outward yeah, yeah. instead of just staying in their own head. Right. So I, I hear what you're saying and I think that's, that's great. It's like, okay, this sucks. I don't know when it's going to end. I don't know if it's going to end. I can't control it. So what can I do to, to make something of this other than just that it sucks? Like yeah, how can otherwise, I turn Otherwise, all you do is sit there and wish that it would end and think about how bad it sucks. Yeah. I mean, that that's all that you do, you know, because that's all you feel like you can do. But the, the remedy to that, maybe something will come along and then the situation will just change seemingly on its own and then it won't suck anymore. But for something to go from suck to not suck, you have to do something. Something has to be done. Why yeah. not be the one that, that seeks out that solution? Not even just so it will end, but so you can make it better. You have a goal to achieve. You had something to aim for. Yeah. That's that. I like that. Like ch- changing it. What, what, what is the action? How am I transforming it? Because why do we, why do we even say something sucks to begin with? Well, of course, pain. And then yep. there's people with chronic pain, yep. but pain from whatever you're doing. But most of the time for myself, it sucks because it's keeping me from doing what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's eliminated my expect expectations of how my week's going to be or what next year mm-hmm. might be, you know what I mean? Or, or a move I want to make. Well, this sucks, man, because mm-hmm. I'm having to go through this or help take care of this person or, or do mm-hmm. something like that without any action. It's just going to keep sucking. You're just mm-hmm. going to sit there and sulk about it. A hundred percent. Well, you said, Chad, uh, you know, you was talking about praying and. Yeah, we're going to definitely move into that, Blake, for sure. It's it's a good time to move into that. Yeah. You know, when I had, I mean, I'm still dealing with it some, but like all that stuff with my heart and beating irregularly. And, you know, I would tell some people about it and they would say like, well, can I pray for you? And I say, yeah, I'd love for you to. And they would and they'd pray, you know, that it goes away. And then it doesn't. And then someone else will do it. And I'm like, you know, yeah, pray for me. Yeah, go for it. I, I believe, I believe God can. He has healed me before, taken pain away. And I believe that he will. But when he doesn't, then what do you do with that? You know, like, how do you not let it in your further, in your prayers that you, that you pray later on, how do you not let those situations impact your faith and your belief that God can and will mm-hmm. take things away or not. And I have my own answer for that, that I'll share, but like, have y'all experienced that? And if so, what is like, what do you do with that? Does that make sense? Yeah. I think, I think it makes sense. I've got in my head, what I think you mean. Yeah. But like, how do you deal with that? I mean, I don't, that uh, that's predicated on the idea that like, you're praying that you'll be healed and like believing that you will be right. I mean, the premise of that is like, and then what happens when, if that doesn't happen? Well, yeah, basically I don't think it's God's will for us to be sick, but we get sick. And when we pray for it, we don't get healed. And and then you think, well, why does God 
why didn't he heal me or why why didn't he heal any of these other people? Was there something wrong with my prayer? Was there something wrong with my mm-hmm. belief or is it just not his will? No, I think it is God's will for us to be healthy and to not have well, ailments and some we can bring on ourselves. Um, but and that yeah. may be going down a different path than we, he wanted to go. But. Well, you know, then then the yeah, because especially me, I can always talk about understanding the will of God because is it God's will for us to be sick? Well, like, was that the original plan? Well, no, but it, it's not like when we get sick, that somehow is circumventing. It, it's not, well, <laughs> to speak it in multiple terms, it's not a surprise when that happens to God. It's not, Yeah. it's not something that he lost control of. It's not something that, you know, but, but is it his will? I mean, like in a way it is, cause that's what happened and that's what's presented before you. Like, I don't know. And that, it's interesting too. Getting sick is something that happens to you. And you think about that in the context of God's will. And then you think about the actions that we take and if that's God's will or not. And sometimes we look at things like, well, I did this, so that must have been God's will for my life. But then other things we'll do it and we'll go, no, nah, I, I went outside of his will when I did that. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It seems like we pick and choose which one is and isn't just based on kind yeah. of subjective things. But then prayer, that's interesting when you pray something and truly believe that it will happen and then it doesn't. Because I don't know how much I've done. I mean, I think when you pray for things and you ask for things, you know, the Bible talks about asking and believing that it will happen. But I think a lot of times me personally would approach it like, I don't know if this will happen or not, but that's what I want. Yeah. So I'm going to ask for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then that wouldn't even have, I guess that's not believing that it would happen then. Yeah. You know, but if you do, and then it doesn't happen. I would, I could definitely see how that would lead into thoughts of, well, I did something wrong then. Yeah. You know, or I prayed wrong or, or what's the deal? Like if this isn't God's will and I asked, believing that it would be taken away and it wasn't yet or what, like, what's the deal? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Cause you said you had some. Yeah. I mean, my, you know, I mean, I've, I guess I've thought about that for a long time, even before, recently but i've always just returned to two different places in scripture and one place is um where the the father's bringing his son to to jesus to be healed and and he tells you know jesus um i believe but forgive my unbelief and it's always been like you know hey I'm bringing him to you. Like, I believe you can do it, but there is a part of me that's like, is this even like, is, will this possible. really happen? Is this possible? Yeah. And so that's one place. And and I use that even in my own prayer. And I'm just honest with God, like, Hey, this is what I'm asking for. And I, I do believe based off of your word and my past experience that you can, and that you will, but there is a part of me you know, I don't go into prayer acting like, you know, hey, I'm a hundred percent because the truth is a lot of times I'm not. Yeah. And I'm honest, you know, and um, and I and I get that from scripture. And the other part of me or the other part of scripture that I have always held on to was in uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego when they won't bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar and they carry him to the fire and they say, well, we're going to throw you in that fire. And they say, well, that's fine. Cause our God will save us from that fire. But even if he doesn't, we will still worship him. And of course God ends up saving them. And, uh, but that part where they said, you know, Hey, that's fine. Throw us in there. We fully believe he'll save us. But if he doesn't, that's fine too, because of everything else that he's done and, and who mm-hmm. he's been in our life all the way up to this point, even if he doesn't, we'll still, and you're we're, saying we're still it's them. noteworthy that they said, even if he doesn't. Yeah. Because yeah. they believe that he would, but also like. They're saying sometimes he, maybe sometimes in our past he had, you know, yeah. they don't say that, but they could only mean that because they wouldn't have said that if there wouldn't have been times 
that he didn't do what they thought he was going to do. Or the yeah, or the possibility in their mind that that wouldn't happen because yeah. of whatever reason outside of their comprehension. Yeah. So, I mean, in my mind, those are two things that I've always held on to. But I've, you know, I go back and forth and think about that from time to time. But those, I think, are key places we can hold on to um, to help get us through those times that, you know, when life is sucking and we're praying and we're doing all these things and it feels like God's not there, like he doesn't hear us, like he's not answering us. Um, I always fall to that. Yeah. I've, I've been thinking a lot about this and it's, um, it's interesting to me that we, we so much want our life to be just filled with peace, joy, harmony, laughter, and good times. It's interesting. It's interesting when we get in these situations where life begins to suck and, and whether we're praying for our, ourselves or whether we'll, we're praying for someone else that is suffering, um, many of the times what we're praying for is, is a deliverance from discomfort or a deliverance from tribulation or a deliverance from pain. We're praying for a a absence of these things in our lives because we don't want them there. Right. And it's interesting that we're praying to the Lord Jesus Christ and asking that those things be banished from our lives. When he <clears throat> told us, it's interesting. He told us in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you, uh, so that in me you may have peace, meaning if you believe in Christ, you will you you have access to peace. But in the world you will have tribulation. He tells us that in this life, he warned us up front: in this life, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have pain. You're going to have discomfort. You're going to have all those things, right? But you can, if you will focus on me. And if you will focus on eternal life, which we don't focus on near enough, because what? Because of our carnality. We're so concerned about the things that are plaguing us in this life. On a day-to-day -day basis, we lose focus on eternal life. We don't think about it. We don't talk about it. It doesn't stay in the forefront of our, our mind. I mean, how many times a day do you think about the problems that you have in this life in comparison with how many times a day do you think about the gift of eternal life that you will inherit here very shortly? That's probably way out of balance, right? You probably think about the crap that's wrong with you and the people that you love in this life way more than you focus on the eternal life the gift of eternal life that you have access to through Christ, you and those that you love who has who, who have accepted Christ. Like that is way out of balance in my own life personally. I'll just go ahead and tell you. And so we're praying for deliverance from all of this tribulation that we experience in this life. And we're praying to a God that told us up front, you're going to have tribulation in this life. Sorry about your luck, buddy. That's just the way it is. But guess what? You can have peace in me still because I've offered you eternal life. And if you will just keep your eyes fixed on that, then it really doesn't matter what the crap comes your way in this life. It don't matter. Whatever happens to you in this life, if you can maintain focus on the gift of eternal life with Christ, you can endure anything in this life. But we don't do that. Another thing that's strange is we're we're asking for an absence of pain, discomfort, anxiety, all these things which are not good. And I agree with Blake that was not God's or that the original design for mankind and the earth before sin entered the equation and man fall from his original fell from his original created state because of sin, because of the choice to sin. That that all this stuff that we're plagued by 
wasn't meant to exist, but it does exist now. And you know the interesting thing about all these things that we want to stop experiencing in life? The interesting thing is that when we are experiencing those things in life, most of the time, the, the experience that you're having with that pain, discomfort, whatever it may be, is drawing you closer to the Lord. But we want, we want it out. We want it. We're, we're, banish this from my life. Banish this, this discomfort from my life. Banish this sickness from my life. What, it's drawing you closer to the Lord. And, and, you, and, and let me tell you, well, I, it I can. It can. It does me. It does me. When I when I'm in the in this situation where I see someone that I love suffering, I'm going to pray harder and I'm going to and I'm going to conduct myself in a more Christ-like manner than any other t- and and it's interesting to me that it's like we want the absence of all these things. Well, what would we do as Christians when everything's good, man? I can only speak to myself. When everything's good, man, and there's no struggle, and there's no one suffering, and there's and and all all the needs are met, and the sun's shining. What well, what do you do? Then you start doing what you want to do. What corn just said. You don't think you? I, I mean, there have been long seasons of my life like that where things were just outstanding. I'll go. Uh, I'll go a week without praying. And then when I do finally pray to the Lord, it's just like half-hearted. You know, you you're not really just just hitting the, hitting your knees and saying, "Lord, here I am. I got nothing. I can't fix this. I'm tired of it. I'm beat down, and I'm just here to tell you <laughs> that's how it is." And it's like I I think that Jesus knows that about us. <clears throat> I think that the Lord knows. Oh, I, he sees what I do. He says, well, Chad, <laughs> you know, the seasons that I've given you where all this bad, these bad things weren't happening, you abandoned me. But now you're going to come to me and ask you and put up and put these requests to me to to take all this away from you. Well, what are you going to do when I do that? Are you going to abandon me again? Because it sure is nice to talk to you multiple times a day. <laughs> it sure is nice to know that, you know, you're relying on me as your father. It sure is nice for you to remember your mortality. Sure is nice to see you, you know, in a humbled state because you sure are close to me right now, but you're asking me to stop all that. What are you going to do, man? You're going to abandon me again? (laughs) That's the way we treat the Lord so many times, man. And so we're crying out to the Lord to make our lives easy. When he told us up front, you're going to have tribulation. We're crying out to the Lord to to make our lives easy so that we can then and go do what we want to do and abandon our relationship with him because we've shown him that we do that in the past. And we're mad. We're, we're, We're mad about the... We're, we're mad when life sucks. When it's like, well, Christian, what did you what did you expect? Like, go back and read the book of Genesis. When the Lord God cursed the earth, and mankind fell from his purpose. Now, thank, thankfully, we've been redeemed by way of the blood of Christ, and we've been reconciled back to Christ, but we are still living in this life on this fallen earth. And things will not be perfect until we receive our inheritance with Christ, which is eternal life in the perfected state, in the original state that we were meant to live in. And so we want to fix this life but we, we don't want to even consider 
what the Lord's given us in terms of a gift. I mean, what literally, literally, man, come on. What else could you have asked for other than eternal life with your creator in a perfected state? Well, what what else could you have asked don't for? Don't you think that's part of why it's such a struggle when you're here is because you are longing for that? You talk about it all the time. You wish nothing more than you could depart the tent. So it is natural to not want those things to happen. I think it's good what you're saying they do as they draw you closer and they remind you of these things and they, all of the things that come out of it. But I, I mean, it makes sense that in this world, in this state we're in, that when they happen, we wish they were over. And part of it, I think, is is the longing for eternity. And what you know, it's interesting. Why it's interesting our thoughts as as carnal man. Why do we wish that that the the pain and suffering was over? It, it's all but, of, all of that stuff. All it is doing is conforming you more into the likeness and image of the God that you worship. But so, like, but we want it to be over, right? Why do we want it to be over? We want it to be over because of selfish reasons. Yeah, it's all can that he, Jesus Christ his his whole story is of being mocked, of being of being made fun of, of being beaten, of being tortured, of being. Well, but even like, but but I don't think you read that story as as he just wanted that because he liked it. He wanted that because of he wanted us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So he didn't want. But we are. He didn't want it either. I mean, he didn't just just for the for for just the sake of what it was and no reason beyond that. He wasn't like, yeah, I like getting mocked and beat and tortured. And no, I mean, he wanted to do that and wanted that because of what it was doing, what yeah. he was doing. Yeah, and so so like, like, of course, we don't want it either. Li but likewise. You said he wanted that because of what it well, was doing. He, he wanted that. He he he, that was the he way to came do it. here. He came yeah. here yeah. to be mocked and beaten and tortured and yeah. ultimately uh crucified. Well, I, I I know it's a radical thought. Well, we don't look at it like but he's you, doing you that. You don't you don't you shouldn't desire to suffer. But you should desire to be more like Christ. And the way and, to do and that. And the example that we have of Christ as Christ is through suffering on this earth. His suffering led to the ultimate victory. Well, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. If you look at it like you're trying to make it end or you're trying to. Well, uh, and, and you can't say like, well, Christ suffered, so I'm going to suffer. And you go intentionally do something to right. yourself. That, to, to that's suffer. what Chili's but, hitting on. Yeah. 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 But, no, you're going to suffer. Yeah. Your desire should bring on suffering. Like, like your actions and the things that you do and the way that you treat people should bring on suffering because of the way other people will treat you and, and how things will happen. What, what, and, and the what was the ultimate suffering for us as selfish humans? The inability to do what we want to do. Anything that yeah. stands in the way of that. So, Cornbread, you hadn't talked in a while. What's on your mind? Well, I, I was thinking... When we was pretty much all talking about prayer and, you know, Blake with his thing here, here recent, you know, I can tell though it may not be healed, the difference between you could see worry on him at the beginning. It's not healed. I don't see no worry on him now. My mama, she's been dealing with Parkinson's for 10 years and it's worse today than it was at the beginning, all the prayers and whatnot. She still has Parkinson's and it's 10 times worse, but her suffering isn't like it was. The, the, I talk to her two, three, four times a day. She's in better spirits now than, than she was. So to say prayers wasn't answered because she, she wasn't healed or something like that. I think it's a T totally wrong perspective. Mm, yeah. And all in all in being healed, the ultimate answer is going to be when we go up there with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's, I, I was thinking, and this may be a little bit off kilter, but talking about for, for me, something sucking, you know, is mainly wrapped around worry. Like what's going to happen? Why is it happening? What can I do? What should I do? And, you know, 
you hear all kinds of talk about the state of the world and we're closer to nuclear war than than anything else and stuff like that don't bother me a bit like push those buttons i don't want the people that's that don't follow christ and don't know christ to die but if if the world blows up i know where i'm going like i don't worry a bit about things like that i worry about stuff that keeps me from going turkey hunting i worry about stuff that keeps me from doing whatever it is I want to do. And that's when I start suffering. I've had a heart thing. And when it first started happening, it ain't healed, but it don't bother me near in my mind with worry than what it, what it did before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying, corn. So I, I think the applicable takeaway from that is like, you know, in, in prayer, maybe sometimes shifting the perspective from in this suffering to um lord just uh teach me teach me a way to deal with this suffering Absolutely. In, in a way that that glorifies you i don't expect yeah. it to end yeah you told me in this life i'm gonna have tribulation um if it be your will end it but uh but i don't expect it to end you told me about this but yeah. teach me to teach me to deal with it. Yeah. I like that phrase you used, if it be your will, end it. That's uh that's something that I've heard people say and pray since I was a tiny youth. And uh don't know that it ever made sense to me because I couldn't tell you how the long ago the first time i had the thought of and still do it, i guess it's what's made prayer in some sense seem strange fundamentally is it like asking for god's will to be done yeah you know that's in the lord's prayer yeah i will be done i mean i can't help but think what does me asking that or saying that have to do with his will being done? It's going to be anyway. And I think part of it, you know, what that is though, is the faith and the, the testament to it's showing submission. Right. I mean, because it's like, I ain't got to ask for that. It's going to be done. Yeah. 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 But, but I, I think that is all it can be because it's, it's a, it's a show of submission and yeah. surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Thy will be done. But then yep. even like growing up playing sports, you know what a common thing everybody prays is? Uh, essentially, Lord, let us win this game if it be your will, you know? And it's like, they, it's like, it's always seemed like this little thing you sneak in there to make it okay to ask to w win a competition or something. It's like, it's always been odd. And it's just, even that is not praying for your will to be done. It's praying or what you want what you want and then i'll just throw that in to kind of cover that up yeah, but yeah it's yeah. like you didn't pray hey as far as the outcome of this game your will be done yeah you know it's let us win if that's your will but i mean i just it's always all of that's always been confusing to me but i don't know how you could land on much else other than what i started to say and you finished much more eloquently that it's a sign of or a, a it's an act of submission um, to whatever his will is. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't help th but think about these or this particular topic without um, reflecting on the account of Job in the Bible, which is an ancient book um, toward the front of your holy Bible. And it's a, it's an amazing account. And, you know, you talk about, you talk about somebody whose life sucked. And that's another thing. I think another interesting thing that's highlighted in that particular account in the book of Job is that a lot of times we are trying to look for reasons of why things in our life suck so bad. Like, what did we do wrong? What are we doing wrong? Yeah. What's the bad decision we made? 
And it's interesting that the account that's given to us, particularly or particularly pertaining specifically to when life sucks and how to react in the book of Job, you are given the example of a man who must who 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 endures great suffering, and he didn't do anything wrong. He did nothing wrong. So I think a lot of times we cause ourselves more suffering. <laughs> when we're dealing with something and we think we think it's our fault. And sometimes it is your fault. Sometimes you do reap what you sow. But also in this life for Christians, you could be doing everything right, yeah. just like Job was doing. And still, this the, what Jesus said, in this life you will have tribulation, that was true thousands of years ago for Job. Same as it's true for us here today. You could be doing everything right. And you're still, you still might lose everything. And you still might, you might, you know, old Job find, found himself sitting in a pile of ashes, scratching his boils with pot shards. All of his family had been killed. He lost all of his possessions. I'm talking about rough, son. And then his wife comes to him and says, what the crap is wrong with you, Job? Why don't you quit praying to your God? Curse God and die. That's what his wife told him. His wife, his wife looked at him and thought, ain't you tired of praying? What's wrong with you? Curse your God and die. I mean, man, I ain't, I ain't never got to that point. I ain't never had nobody tell me that, and I ain't never got to that point in my mind either. I say I get... You know, you get frustrated praying for the deliverance for the things that you're suffering from, and they just don't seem to be happening, and we covered all that. But um, but Job chose to, <clears throat> to keep going. He chose to keep praying. And then he has all his friends come to him and tried to tell him the reason he's suffering so bad is because of something that he had done, and he's racking his brain. He's like, daggone, I, I can't come up with nothing. There's no secret sin in my life. There's no, there's nothing, there, there's just nothing there, but everybody's bringing these accusations against him. And here he's lost everything, and his physical body is just tore up and broken down, and he's miserable, can't sleep covered in boils it's like ultimately what was the conclusion we, finally finally god approached job and what was the conclusion blake well job has all these questions he has hundreds of questions and god approaches him and and uh Job doesn't say anything but covers his mouth and says that basically, how dumb was I to question you for all this thing? And uh, really, he didn't need answers to his question. He just needed a revelation of how big God was and how in control he was. And then the answers to his question didn't matter because he understood that God was in control of everything. And that submission to him meant that everything was going to happen the way it should, whether he suffer or not. Yeah, y'all don't quit talking. I'm going to I'm going to read that. I'm going to read that conclusion cuz it's worth reading. Do you think God being in control uh brings comfort? Say it again now. Does God being in control bring comfort to me? I guess, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the peace. Because that doesn't mean anything is going to happen. Right. It doesn't mean what you want's going to happen. It doesn't Well, I guess it does mean something's going to happen. It means in the end but it doesn't mean that anything along the way will be better or worse or Well, Corn, we was talking about you the other day and all the stuff that you deal with and things that you still don't even tell us. You know, you told me the other day, you want an example? Let me tell you this example. <laughs> I was telling Chad about it. Did you and, call him Job? And we said, <laughs> you know, you would never know Corn even was de dealing with anything. He's the same person. He shows up 
gets what he needs done, still goes to the gym, still, I mean, yeah. just acts like the same person no matter what's happening in his life, no matter what he's dealing with. And even through some of it, you say, I'm at peace with it. And so where does that yeah. come from? I mean, like I, I can answer it only one, one way. I don't know. I mean, I really don't, I, I try to follow Jesus the absolute best I can. And I fell at it every day, but I seem, and that, that hasn't happened till here in the last couple of years. I just seem to be at peace with whatever struggle. And I, I don't know, man, I'm, I know it comes from God, but I can't explain how or what it's a hundred percent. Him It's not me. Yeah. Trust me. Cause I want to shake some folks heads off sometimes, <laughs> you know, but yeah. yeah. I don't know how, how it's happened. Well, I'll read this conclusion. Uh, when God finally <clears throat> confronts Job, and J again, Job's been racking his brain. Why is this going on? He's been crying out to the Lord. He even cries out. I know at, at times in the book, he cries out for the Lord to just go ahead and take him on out, man. He's done. He, he in, I think he ends up even cursing the day he was born. Why was I even born, God? Why did you why'd you even bring me into this life? Right? And when when God finally shows up in this account, it's in chapter 38, and it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is it that darkens counsel? by words without knowledge. And God's talking about all his buddies that was coming to him, telling him all these things about the nature of God and why he's suffering and why all this Tell is going on. Repent. Yeah, yeah, repent. Yeah, and his wife telling him to curse God and die. He's saying, God says, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Then he tells Job, gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. And then God says, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if you have understanding, who has laid the measures thereof? If you know, or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with the doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of a womb. When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it. And break up for it my decreed place and set bars and doors. And he said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know its place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, and that the wicked might be shaken out of it. And God goes on and on here, and he is just ultimately reminding Job of how powerful he is, and essentially how much wiser he is than Job could ever comprehend. He's reminding him of his magnificence, of his power, of the control that he has over everything that is. Literally everything that, that is is being held together by the power of his might. Every molecule that is is being held together by the power of God. And... In a, in a big way, this is an amazing response by the Lord God, as we would expect from a being as wise as the Lord God, of being like, um, man, uh, 
like you for, you forgot you've lost focus of who who you're praying to, man. You've lost focus of who I am and who you are and where you fit into this equation, man. Deal with it. I'm your God. Deal with it. And we have eternal life to always find peace and comfort in, no matter what. I mean, I love it when the Lord says, gird up your loins like a man. He's saying, deal with it. Yeah. I don't know, man. We forget the majesty of God. Like, we take so much. I was thinking about this yesterday, too, and we'll close it up. We'll close the show down. Man, we lose sight of the majesty of the creator of the universe. I was thinking the other day, the first the the first verse I think it is in in the Bible in Genesis says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. I love that verse because it accounts for the three aspects of the universe, time in the beginning, time starts, time is a created thing. God created the heavens, which is space, and the earth, which is matter, time, space, and matter. But the heavens was the one I was thinking about. Get your, see if you can wrap your mind around this. Okay, I'll give you this example. In your house, let's say in your house you have a living room, and you decide to buy a new Lazy Boy recliner to put in your living room. Well, if you've already got furniture in there, what's the first thing that you think? Do I have space for this new Lazy Boy? And if not, what do you have to do? You have to move things around to actually create the space for that thing to fit in your living room. And I was thinking about this. When we think of, when we call out, we call space, space, right? Chili's in the Space Force. We call it space, but we don't think of it for what it literally is. Why was it named space? Because it is the space God created to fit the universe into. Like, think about, think about the, 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 the magnificence of the fact that God not only created all that is time and matter, all elements, all molecules, all matter in the universe, but he actually even literally created the space for that matter to exist in. Like the space didn't, space didn't exist. He's so freaking powerful that he can call in to existence the space for his creation to fit into. Wrap your freaking mind around that, man. Like it, it wasn't just like God said, well, over here, there's some, there's an empty spot. I'm going to fill it with something. No, the empty spot didn't even exist. He literally created the space itself. Freaking mind boggling, dude. Like, we just lose sight of the majesty. When we look around us out here, we take for granted this creation, this very creation. We take, we take it all for granted. We don't see the majesty of it because it's the only thing that we've ever known. But it's like, you pitily stinking man, you can't create anything. You pitily stinking man. You, 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 man, you think that you are so wise and so thoughtful <clears throat> and so innovative. <clears throat> you can't do nothing, man. <clears throat> it's wild, dude. It is. It's wild how much mankind's elevated himself in all of his science, 
and all of his engineering and all of his philosophy and all of his thoughts. And he can't make, he can't create anything. He can't make anything come from nothing. He can't make a single thing come together that is not already there. <clears throat> Man, in comparison to even scratching the surface of the beginning of an of thought of the majesty of God, man is a dumb, dumb creature. But boy, have we not elevated ourselves to God's, to a God-like status. I don't know. Just wanted to share that with y'all. <clears throat> well, all right. Um, if you guys enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate it. If you went and checked out, our partner at Barbell Apparel, man. Been with Barbell for a couple years now. Uh, let me go ahead and tell you, man, they just came out with a new lineup of running shorts and also joggers. What do they call Chili? The Adapt Joggers and the Adapt Shorts. The, these things are spot on. If you're looking for a good pair of running shorts or a good pair of long running pants to wear in this springtime when it's freaking cold one morning and hot the next day, the joggers work great. Um, so go check those out, the Adapt Shorts and the Adapt Joggers. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, they're awesome people with awesome products. We love them. That's why we're partnered with them is because they're good people, and we've put their products through the the full range of, uh, of motion. Yeah, and, and I think uh, your input had a lot to do <laughs> with the design of both of those. Yeah, so we basically took a lot of what we learned about the uh, shorts and the joggers on Cocodona, on the Cocodona 250. And um, the owners over at Barbell, we had a conversation. I talked to them about what I would like to see changed. And they've built all of that into the uh, the new Adapt shorts and joggers. Yeah, so, they're heavy duty, soft, got a lot of pocket space. You can run the drawstring on the inner, inside or outside. Yeah, you won't be disappointed. They fit well, yeah. I don't think the shorts are quite out yet. The joggers are out. But I think the shorts are coming out in a week or two. Well, gotcha. you better get ready for them, son. If you're joggers looking for, are out though. Yeah. you're looking yeah. for a pair of running shorts or joggers. That's that's the one to get. They got all kinds of other stuff over there, also, man. The most comfortable jeans you've ever worn. Um, all kinds of shirts, all kinds of good stuff. Barbellapparel.com. I'll get my tech guy to drop a link in the uh, description of this episode. Y'all go check them out. Yeah, drop our link in there, Blake. Yeah, our <laughs> partners are our partners are important to us, guys. Uh. Yeah, if we're going to win, we got to win together. So, Blake, you got anything before this? Uh, yeah, before had, the whole room overheats? Yeah, we had some super chats come in. We had Jimbo Jones coming in at $1.99, my first SC. What's your opinion on civilian S-I-G-I-N-T? SIGINT? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. But don't we appreciate well, you. We, Super chat, Jimbo, Jimbo. We can't discuss that on the podcast, man. <laughs> Jay Leslie coming in at nine ninety nine. God bless you and your family. Thank, Thank you, Jay and Jimbo. C. Blake. Uh, this is Chelsea Blake. I'm fairly Zoom. certain. Nineteen ninety nine. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you. I sit in many courts, and this is the finest. Judge Chili is surely the fairest. The stern Chadwick W. is a fine prosecutor, and I'd have Sir Cornelius de Bread to defend me. May the Lord have mercy on your turkey-seeking souls. <laughs> Thank Mar you, Chelsea. Marty Bingham. Y'all remember old Marty oh, yeah. coming in at forty nine ninety nine. Gosh. Hey, Marty. That's overall Marty? Uh-huh. Hey, oh, I miss old Marty, man. I yep. know. It. He was a tough bird, wasn't he? Sure he sure was. was. Jacob Miser coming in at four ninety nine. Yeah, Thank you, Jacob. And this one, Chili Jr. Uh oh. Coming in at four ninety nine. Oh man, he finally got old enough to get on YouTube. Chili, you're screwed now. Chili Good. Jr. Hey yeah. guys, have y'all done an episode on Romans nine? And if not, could you do one? I'd be down for it. That's kind of where you like to be too. <laughs> well, Romans nine, it's a little one chapter later than Yeah. Well, yeah, we could do that, huh? Yeah. Chili Jr. Yeah. You got to talk to your baby mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chili Jr. <laughs> you need to get off at YouTube. LV yep. coming in at $1.99. LV, what's up, brother? 
Manfred Kampf coming in, 20 Canadians. What I'm talking about. Thank you, Manfred. Said, count your blessings and try to surmount life's trials and tribulation. I hope everyone here can get past the suck and put in the put it in the rearview mirror. Mike Hoffman coming in at 499. Life is going to continue to suck for all of us listening. If CB and Blake don't get on the turkey board, much love from Big Mike. Well, I don't think you got to worry about them, Big Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Dylan Sutter coming in at 999. Being a good Christ follower doesn't guarantee a life without suffering. The world has suffering, period. But the Lord provides his strength, peace, and hope. Here is a tough one. Ecclesiastes 7, 2 through 6. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Got LV coming in at 1999. Dang, gosh, LV. LV, you dropping it hot, LV. No uh, comment. Just, yeah. just, just the money there. We appreciate you, LV. Mute coming in at $10. Outstanding and needed. Hold on. Is that mute or newt? <laughs> mute. <laughs> oh, that's mute. Chad, mute. Chad, Chad's always wanted to know a guy named Newt. Mute. mute. <laughs> <laughs> And Thank the you, last you, one you. here, we've got Bo Diddley coming in at ten dollars. I always realize that my life must be going okay at the time when I look down and see dust on my Bible. Yeah, that's yeah. We we hit on that a little bit. That's the truth, man. Bo yep, Diddley. All muscled up runner Greer, he just come in at nine ninety nine. I say this every podcast, but I'm thankful and grateful for y'all. So y'all, I've found eternal life in Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Love you. Praise the Lord, muscled up, runner. We love you too, brother. LV said, Tent City, T-Y. Tent, Tent City, T-Y. T-Y. That's what I'm talking about, little Virgil. Is that the, that must be the real little Virgil. Oh, it's the real okay. yeah, it's the real right. LV. Yep, he's on here. It's a famous dude right there, man. <laughs> little Virgil. We've is still so, never talked to him. He is so freaking famous, dude. But he is a legend. <laughs> yeah, when are we going to do another call-in show, Chili? Good question. You ready for it? Yeah, man. You ready to get wild? Well, that's a wild show. It's a wild the show. call-in show is a, <laughs> yeah, it's its own unique style. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll do another one of those for y'all in the next couple of weeks. All right, guys. We love y'all. Enjoy the rest of your week. And Lord willing, we'll see y'all next Wednesday. Enough said. <laughs>